Well, hello to everyone and welcome again to the next episode of this journey that we're taking around Il Chi Lee's book, I've Decided to Live 120 Years. Today's show is really going to be a lot of fun for me. And uh, no matter what age you are in our audience, and we're so glad to have people who are very young and some people who are not so very young who are part of the audience. But today we're going to be meeting and talking with one really fantastic woman. And her name is Williette uh, uh, Wong, who is 91 years young. And I guarantee whether you are in her age group, my age group, or you're somebody in your 20s, there's an awful lot to learn today because we're gonna be talking about her perspectives and experiences on how do we live a long, but most importantly, a meaningful and complete life. And she's had experiences that have been good in her life and experiences maybe that have not been so good and all of which helped to shape the wonderful person named Williette. Welcome and how are you doing today? Fine. We're in Hawaii, so I'll say aloha. Ah, well, that is terrific. I know that, by the way, you were born in Hawaii in 1927, that you were first employed uh, as a school secretary and then working for the government at, at Pearl Harbor, which, of course, we all know is such a famous uh, landmark in American life. Mm -hmm. But I also understand that you have a passion for growing orchids. Can you tell me about that? Well, we started growing orchids on our honeymoon. That was in 1947. We went to Hilo, and my husband just fell in love with orchids. So not knowing how to grow orchids, he, he bought all these seedlings, came home, didn't, they all died. Oh, no. <laughs> but, you know, the... Orchid people are so wonderful. An orchid grower invited him to his house, t taught him how to plant them, and they, they were wonderful. So he just started that, and then we got involved with the orchid clubs and met many wonderful friends, you know, from all over the world. So oh, that's beautiful. It, 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 it's a beautiful world if you can get out and look at it. If you can't, well, there's the internet that you, you can travel all over the world. That is a beautiful, beautiful story. Let me tell you a story that comes out of the book by Ilchi Lee. <laughs> and, um, I want to see what your reactions are. I, I'll, I'll go through the story pretty quickly. In fact, I'll just read from the book. And, and see what your reaction is. He talks about a man who uh, was the founder of a Korean university um, uh, when he was younger. And he said that I really worked hard when I was young. As a result, I was recognized for my skills and respected. I was able to retire proudly and confidently at the age of 65. However, I shed tears of regret 30 years later on his 95th birthday. His first 65 years were proud and honorable, he thought. Uh, but the 30 years of his life since then uh, had been full of regret and, and bitterness. Um, after retiring, he thought, I've now lived my life. I have many years left. Uh, the le years left are just a bonus. With that thought in mind, I just waited for a painless death, a pointless, hopeless life, he said. I lived that for 30 years. That's a long time. When I retired, he, you know, if he had even thought that he would live another 30 years, he would have um, started to think about doing things different. And he concludes his story by saying that he's 95 now and he has a clear mind. He said, I may live 10 or 20 years more. I'm now going to start studying foreign languages, which is something I've always wanted to do. I have just one reason for this, he said. And that is that on my 105th birthday, 10 years from now, I won't regret not starting when I was 95. How do you react to that kind of, uh, of a tale from, from an honored and very smart and, and, and intelligent man? It's wonderful, awesome. I wish I can be like that. In fact, whenever I see, you know, I, 
I sometimes walk like a robot because of my arthritic knees. But when I see hula dancers, I say, I'm going to go back and dance again. <laughs> but not dance as a robot. But, you know, our brains never stop growing. And it's wonderful. It's really just waking up each day and thinking, what can I do today? Oh, that's beautiful. Well, you know, I just felt so sad that this man's story that that he just turned his life engine off and coasted mm -hmm. for all of those years. And then all of a sudden, he was lucky enough to realize, wait a minute, I still have something left and I'm gonna change the way I behave. So I guess it's never too late. It, it's never too late and wonderful for someone to find himself, you know? Yeah. Not exactly Because right. after retirement, after you take all the trips, everybody wants to travel. So what next? I, I used to get bored when I'd go on a cruise, it was so nice, but you know, two weeks, <laughs> I, I was going crazy. I mean, you don't have to think, you know, your meals are all there. You're not thinking, you're just following the flow. Oh, I was going crazy. I was so happy when it ended. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me, um, have you ever thought about living to be 120? I mean, uh, is that an idea now that it's in your mind? Is that something that you would, uh, would enjoy, do you think? Yes. In fact, I had a term insurance for 90 years. <laughs> and as the date was approaching, I said, wow. I, I've been paying into it, and I'm almost there, so I had it changed. So now it's past 120. If I make it to 95, I don't have to pay anymore. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's, that's, now there's a great incentive for living to be 120. Let me, uh, you, one of the big themes in Il Chili's book and in all of the work that he does is around making the choice. Uh, to decide to take control over your life, the choice to do the things necessary, in this case, to live to be 120. You seem to, at some point in your life, you made a choice to take charge of your life and the completeness of your life. Talk a little bit about how you got to that place and how you made that decision. Well, joining the brain and body really helped. The 10 years that I've been here have really helped my health, my mind. Whatever I do, you know, I see only positive things. Negative, negativity never enters my mind. I, I can do anything. anything <laughs> like the song, anything you can do, I can I do can better. Do better. <laughs> well, when you, what made you decide to visit a, a, and go in the front door of a body and brain center? I mean, something must have been triggering inside of you that said, I want to try something different. Well, my daughter, a, a friend invited my daughter and my daughter attended first class and she came home. She said, Mom, it's wonderful. You should go with us tomorrow. So I did. And I signed up. <clears throat> I... I was sold on the first time I, I entered the center and did the exercises and then learning about meditation. And it, it, it just feels my body when, when I talk, I'm so passionate. I feel it in all my bones, you know. That. When you, when you were, before you went to body and brain, um, had you been making choices and decisions to, to, to have a healthy and a complete and a, a happy life? Or were you uh, somebody that was watching a lot of television and maybe turning yourself off? Where, where did you wind up before you went to the center? No, no. We were always <clears throat> uh, eating healthy food. My husband, for a time, managed a health food store. Oh, really? Oh. Yeah. 
and <clears throat> we were vegans because he had a heart condition. Mm -hmm. And so we were vegans and we were on Dr. Onish's program. Mm -hmm. Neil, Neil Ornish, yeah. yes. Yes, yeah, Neil Ornish. Went to his seminars and it, the, those were wonderful years you know, that we did. So I've always been very conscious of my health and people think we're crazy eating this and that. But, but uh, as far as meditating, we did yoga, but the body and brain is so different. Mm -hmm. And then Yochi Lee's teachings, whenever he opens his mouth, <clears throat> it's, so simple and you see it right away and you see it as an improvement to your life. I like the way you said that, an improvement to your life. Let me tell you one of the things that, that he said that has impressed me about this <laughs> making this choice to live a more complete life. He said that he made the choice out of his desire to be of service to the world and to take responsibility for the dream that he had about how the world should be and set that dream for his life. I think that's very inspiring, don't you? Oh, yes. Whenever you share, you get it back a hundredfold. And it just makes you feel so much better, you know? Not me, me, me all the time, but sharing. Sharing is part of life. And I noticed that the way you talk about having made this choice, and again, I'm, I'm, I, I want and hope that everybody that's listening to us can feel, no matter how old you are, how you can feel the excitement and enthusiasm in your life once you've made, the, again, the decision and continue to reinforce the decision to live your best life. I, I get the sense that the impact has been that it's given you, I guess, a sense of joy is what I'm feeling from you. Oh, definitely. There, there, there's <clears throat> so much joy that when people see you, you know, if, if you go around with a frown all the time, people are going to look at you and frown. <laughs> I'd, I'd rather see a happy face. And, but it, it's your choice. And ev everybody has a choice. And... That's right. You know, it almost seems like a frown is contagious. And thank goodness, a smile is contagious. Mm -hmm. Yes. So <clears throat> I, I think one of the things I'm going to do as a result of my conversation with you, I'm going to go around and infect as many people as I can with smiles. <laughs> oh, yeah. Like I say, whenever I'm in the supermarket, long lines, you know, always talking to people, I, I, you look at people and they're just thinking, what am I going to do this? And you know, and, but when they make eye, when you make eye contact with you, they start smiling yes. and, and it makes my day. I like what, to see people. One of the things you may notice when you walk around, um, Willie Ed, is that um, there are an awful lot of more older people in our world and our societies than when we were growing up, you and I. Um, <clears throat> we now find that there is almost a four times increase uh, from 20 years ago um, in the number of people who are, are, are seniors. Um, and so, and according to the surveys that we've seen, um, 72,000 Americans were over the age of 100 in 2014. That's a lot more people. So we're living a lot young, longer, uh, so many of us. And as a result, the kinds of information that you have been excited by is really going to be very relevant to a lot more people. And I think there are a lot more people that you are going to inspire. Do you know many people your age? Uh, there are a few in my church. They're all canes, wobbly like me, but... but most of them are assisted. Mm -hmm. I think I'm the only one who drives. In fact, it, every week I chauffeur my <laughs> my 86 year old brother in law who can hardly walk. You know, <laughs> <laughs> you're the chauffeur. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm the chauffeur. He shuffles in <laughs> to church, and then 
I'm following after his wife is helping him. But, you know, we smile at each other. It's still a happy life. Mm-hmm. And, and everybody knows, knows us. It, it's wonderful getting old. I go anywhere I go, people hold the door open for me. <laughs> I have to remind them that I'm coming. It's slow, but I'm coming. <laughs> <laughs> when, you, when you think about the people that you know who are older, um, uh, who may not be in as good a shape physically, but what about their mental state? I mean, in the sense of, do you find that there are many people that you meet who are experiencing joy um, in their lives? Are they making, are enough people making the choices and decisions uh, to, to have the sort of attitude that you do and that Ilchi Lee calls for in his book? Well, no, a lot of them have Alzheimer's. Mm-hmm. So it's sad, you know, you have to listen to them repeat and repeat and smile. Mm-hmm. And I try to talk to them about new subjects, but they revert back, you know, repeating. So in my state, I have to learn patience. Ah. <laughs> <I> mean, <laughs> we, we, we have to learn patience. Beautiful. But, but uh, all the people, they, they want to live. <clears throat> they want to be happy. So they keep talking <clears throat> about their past. Let's roll the clock back in, in, in your life. Uh, now you're not 91, but let's move you back to 65. And if you were 65, knowing what you know now, and you could talk to your 65-year-old self, what would you do differently about planning for your best life, your healthiest life, your most spiritually fulfilling life? What would you do differently at 65 uh, than th- that if you had it to do over again? Golly, <clears throat> golly, at 65, I had just retired, traveling, <clears throat> went back to the travel agency. If I had started my exercising, meditating, creating something different instead of just going by the mode, you know. But it, it was a <clears throat> good life. I made a lot of people happy, you know, leading them on. But whenever you travel, it's so funny because people forget how to be creative. And all they're thinking about when they're having breakfast, Mrs. Wong, where are we going to eat lunch? (laughs) They're thinking about the next meal. (laughs) As opposed to being in the moment. Yeah, yeah. So it's different. When I think they were um, wasted years. I mean... You found enjoyment <clears throat> doing well. The, the thing I found rewarding was meeting different people, and different people and different cultures is wonderful. And you know, I think that, that's just great. Yes, because right. we're all connected. This world, and we have yeah. so much to share with each other. And if we would stop worrying about some of the superficial things, but connect and learn, like I'm learning from you right now, and so is our mm-hmm. audience. Mm-hmm. We need to take the time to talk with each other, don't we? Yeah. So, yeah. so I, I've had really, through my travel and orchids, I've, I've had a lot of really good friends living in New, uh, New Zealand, in Europe. Oh. Yes. You know, but they're all going, you know, they're all gone. So it's sad. The longer I live, <clears throat> the more friends. But then I have a lot of younger generations and my nephews, my grandnephews, I look forward to 
Well, this, this is one of the things I wanted to ask you, and you've really hit upon it, because there are a lot of younger people that are watching this show today. Mm-hmm. What do you, what can younger people do who are spiritually inclined, who are motivated to, to, to find their true self, those who are willing to be engaged in being earth citizens and, and all, the, all that comes with that? What can young people do to help and assist people like you? Well, all of the people in body and brain, and we have a lot of young people now who are just awesome. You know, the trip, the, my last trip to Korea, the young people on the bus are just so loving. And I wish there were, we, we could spread the word to the younger generation to get their fingers off that phone. You know, they're there spending more time meditating on that. Than, than they, they have to go out. I, I've never heard it expressed so wonderfully. They spend more time meditating on their cell phone than they do reaching out to real people. Young. My neighbor told me once that her grandson, she woke up and she saw him bent over. She said, oh, he's saying morning prayers, but <laughs> he was up with his phone. <laughs> As you uh, think of other things that, um, I'm just wondering whether it makes sense to, to, to advocate for the young people to, to come and spend time with seniors, assisting them with um, grocery shopping, uh, getting out to places they have to go if they have a car, um, helping to be with them when they exercise. Are those things uh, the kinds of activities that would make sense for you to recommend? Oh, certainly. It, it, it's nice for them to contact people. And, you know, you have that passion. And we, we, we were brought up in Hawaii. We were always brought up to uh, take care of our elders. Oh, oh. So it, it, it's wonderful. It, well, that's a great value to have. And, um, and yeah. I, hope that, I hope that all the people that are watching, um, no matter what age they are, will make a decision today and uh-huh. just keep an image of your face in their mind and just say to yourself, what have I done this week to reach out to help a senior citizen who may be isolated. You know, one of the real problems that, that, that so many seniors have is, is they live isolated lives. They live alone without people mm-hmm. to come and check on them or to come and help. And I think this is something that any spiritually minded person would really see as an opportunity to express their, their sense of spirituality. Don't you? Oh, yes. yes. I, I drive. I pick up my friend t- twice a week and take, take her wherever she wants to go to church, hairdresser, and so it's nice. It's nice that I can do it, you know? And when people hear that, I say, you're still driving? I tell them, nothing wrong with my mind. <laughs> well, by the way, I will tell you, you're the same age almost as my mother, and she drives every day. And mm-hmm. she- You remind me so much of her. Tell me about your lifestyle. And one of the things that you mentioned earlier on uh, that you are struggling a little bit with is some arthritis in your knees and you're going to the body and brain yoga. Uh, What what kinds of exercises are you uh, involved in? What what makes you happy when you, what kind of exercises gives you joy and and helps you physically? Oh, vibrating when (laughs) when i when i get on that floor i i can just move my limbs and i think wow maybe i can jump but (laughs) 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 but but i love just being free you know moving my body i i feel no pain when when we do vibrations and and I can do squats, I can do back rolls, I can do 50 plus back rolls, 50 plus squats, 
And wow. So, now, now you weren't you weren't you weren't able to do those the first day, right? You've sort of worked oh, up to definitely that. not. <laughs> so, what would your advice be to a, a, a to another senior uh, who uh, is just getting started? Uh, because a lot of times we get frustrated that we can't do what we want to do, and then we give up. Well, that's one thing with our body and brain. You know, you do what you want can do you're not limited you if you are limited you know no nobody's judging you and the masters just encourage you they never say oh try try you know they they know that you're giving your all and i do what i can and running i have to learn how to run I, I used to be able to run up the stadium bleachers, you know. Wow. But uh, I have difficulty climbing stairs. I, yes. And even coming downstairs, I walked the 120 stairs in uh, Korea backwards. <laughs> <laughs> All the way backwards. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Well, hold on a minute. Let me let me get this story straight. So you're saying that you were so committed to doing that 120 steps that even though you plus, couldn't do plus it 60, plus, plus 60, plus 60, plus <laughs> 60, yeah, you were so we, we went up to the top. Oh, you went all the way up to the top. Yeah. So you were so committed that you even because you couldn't do it going front wise, you went and did it backwards. Well, wow. going up, I went forward, yeah. but coming back, yeah. it, it was easier. I could walk back. Well, it doesn't seem to me that you're going to let anything get in the way of your achieving your goals. You are one determined lady. I, I try. <laughs> you, you mentioned in terms of your lifestyle that your diet, that you are a, ve a vegan in your diet, and you're still doing that today. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. Or you stopped for a while. Yeah. yeah. So, but I, I do, we, uh, my, my, my daughter grows a lot of, you know, food from Hilo and she, she's with me now. So, oh. and we started cauliflower. Yeah, oh. cauliflower, I, I love that. Oh so my instead, of, instead of rice, we use the cauliflower rice. Yeah. And it's just natural right there. You grow it yourself. Yeah. Wow. So, my my daughter does. She yeah. wants to start a garden, but that's another chore for me to go water them. <laughs> how do you how do you think about your diet and food now? I mean, what other than having these special things that your daughter gives you? Are you uh, attentive to what you put in your body? Oh yes, yes, definitely. I I go on binges sometimes, <laughs> but <laughs> but I love I. I love breakfast is my, I love relaxing, having a good breakfast. And, you know, we elders, we don't need that much food. So I eat a hearty breakfast. Then I don't, I usually have uh, about three o'clock. Then I have a, my heavy meal then. And I'm good for the night. If, if I need to snack on something later on, I do that. So one thing that you might remind all of us about, and, and I have a suspicion that you probably follow this, and that is when you eat, you chew your food thoroughly, don't you? Oh, yeah. And try to think, to enjoy the food, not just Sticking it in your mouth. <laughs> oh yes. Some, 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 sometimes you know you have to stop and say, "Am I putting in my mouth?" Good for you. You uh, another element of our lives, in addition to our physical lives, is our mental lives, and you certainly are very sharp uh, at, at the age of ninety-one. Um, do you do anything special to keep your brain active? Earlier in our conversation, you talked about, you know, how boring it can be, for example, if you get on a, on a boat and there's nothing to do and, and, you're, and you deactivate. What do you do to keep yourself so mentally sharp? Well, I love to do the Sudoku, you know, the Japanese yes. puzzle. 
I, I love that. Uh, crossword puzzles are, uh, they're okay, but I, I prefer doing the jumble, the, mm -hmm. the, the things that are more challenging, you know? So I, I can't stand solitaire. <laughs> <laughs> And so I, I and I bet you that you're probably sharp also because you're, as you say, you're so engaged in the world. I, one thing that Ilshi Lee in his book has a lovely phrase that that I, that I think is very good. He says, "If you think you're old, you'll get old." Mm -hmm. and, I, and I think you think yourself as young. Uh -huh. I love being among young people, but I love being among old people because I can help them too, you know, and. If they're suffering, I'll go do their shoulders or something. And they're, oh. they're very grateful for that. But I love, I, I can't picture myself in a nursing home. Mm -hmm. I, I think it's too depressing. Mm -hmm. yeah. and well, you know, I think, I think what you're saying, though, is another tip for the young people that are watching the show. And that is, I think you just taught two things. And let me see if I got it right. Number one is, one of the things that young people can do for older people is to go give them a back rub. I think that is a oh, yeah. idea. Let's, yeah. let's, so every person who has the ability to, who can hear this show, your assignment is to <laughs> find a senior citizen somewhere and give them a back rub. And, and, and the transfer of loving energy between the two of you, I bet you will just make your whole day smile and make you a very happy person. Don't you think? Oh, yes. When, when we go out from our center, we go out to, uh, uh, to, to show them how to exercise. Mm -hmm. We always end up massaging each person. <laughs> and when we first started, you know, people didn't want to participate. But now when we go and see them, oh, they're ready and... and eager, uh, eager and waiting. Yes. So. Well, we're, we're, um, we're getting near the end of our time, but I, I want to ask you something uh, as we talk about the, you know, we've talked about our physical life, we've talked a little bit about our mental life, and maybe a little bit about our spiritual life. One of the things that people get worried about as they get older is they're, they're afraid of dying. Um, this is a big concern of any human being uh, anywhere in the world. Um, and that can be very stress provoking and, and challenging. How do you approach those kinds of, of, of issues and, and, and your approach to, to, you are going to live to be 120, but at some point we're all going to die, aren't we? Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm not afraid of death. I've lived a wonderful life and I, I'm ready, you know, ready. My husband is waiting. He's been there since 2000. <laughs> All my friends are gone. Mm. You know, people who stress on dying, why, why are you worrying about dying? When, when the time comes, it will come. Why not just enjoy life? And uh. why worry about dying? You know, just, just take each day and enjoy what we have. Just waking up in the morning is such a joy. But if you wake up in the morning and, oh, another day, it's going to be that kind of a day. It's going to be that kind of day. Yeah. Somebody, somebody told me a great phrase. I'll share it with you and see if it works. And that is, when I wake up in the morning, I make up my bed, and then I make up my mind to enjoy the day. Oh, yes, that's beautiful, <laughs> that's true. You mentioned also that you like to take the meditation uh, sessions at Body and Brain as part of your spiritual development. How did you, how do you find that meditating for you? How does, why does that work for you? Oh, for me, it, it comes real easily because I'm able to clear my mind, clear my mind and just, mm -hmm. Whatever comes, comes. It, it, it's funny. Whenever I need to do something, I stop during the day. If I have to do something, I stop, think about it, and the answers come. 
oh. is I can, you know, somehow it just comes. And, somehow and, it just comes. Yeah, that's yeah. what meditation does, isn't it? Yeah. If I have to write something or do, do an uh, invocation and I just think about it and, you know, it's not just following the same thing you did yesterday. You, you have to feel the moment. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, Whenever mm-hmm. you give uh, an invocation, it has to come from the heart, how you feel, and then how, how the people you're talking to, how that will affect them. So. Well, that is a beautiful thought. Well, as we end up, the, one of the most important things also that Ilchidi talks about in I've Decided to Live 120 Years is this notion of completion, sort of putting it all together. And I think you are a great example, uh, Juliette, of someone who has, has, has decided to, to live a, a, a great life, who has decided to be engaged in the world, to be engaged with others, mm-hmm. who accepts the love of others uh, as a part of her development, who is doing what she needs to do with her physical health or mental health or spiritual health. And as any last words, I guess, from you on this notion of, of living a more complete life so that when it's all said and done, you can look back with it and have joy. It's just living, finding your true self. Don't, don't put any makeup to make your life that, you know, just living your true self, being true to yourself. You have to love yourself and mm. to yourself before you can and you know just being one in being you're ready but just say life has been wonderful i love i love living oh my gosh what a way to end our show I, I love living. And so I will just say that you have really, really inspired me today. Um, I have been firmly committed to my journey towards completion. Um, but like everyone, I need energy pills. I need encouragement. Yeah, I, I need an example. <laughs> me and too. I, well, Williette, you have been a major energy pill for me today. And I bet you there are going to be a lot of people who are in their 20s who are watching this podcast. And they're going to say, wow, I think I'm going to make a choice to do even more, to live my life completely and well, so that I can have the same joy that Williette Wong has at 91 and on and on. And so we'll be tracking you as you lead the way down the road for a lot of us. And you keep giving us scouting reports about what's down the road and feed us back information so we can change and improve ourselves. Will you do that for us? Yeah. <laughs> I, I love living and I love meeting Williette Wong. Thank you so much. And for those of you um, who are, uh, would like to send us a note or uh, ask a question or uh, engage with us in any way, just take a look on your screen and all of the information about how to reach us, the website and, and the email address and so forth are all right there on the screen that you can see. And we hope that you will contact us and we look forward to continuing our journey as we go down the road of deciding to live 120 years. See y'all next time. Take care. Bye-bye.